argument made before the court was that the accused of Milan was not upright the reason why he was being arrested. But the learned court below did not find it tenable because it had come on record that the plan was upright that one kg illegal ganja was recovered from him for which he did not have any license. What else the learned ambiguous curate wanted to be communicated was not clear. Para, the next argument which was made by the learned counsel for the accused relates to the police patrolling party having not taken any public witness while making the recovery from the accused. It has also not been found appealing for the court because it has recorded that the recovery was made all of a sudden and it was also found recorded by it that PW1 had clearly stated that public witness was tried to be taken but nobody was ready to become a witness first. The next point argued before the learned court below was that no information was given to the higher police authorities as was required under section 52 of the 57 of NDPS Act. But even this argument was not found appealing by the court below as it has recorded that witnesses which were examined by the prosecution could be put question in this regard. But no such question was made by the defence before the court below. Learned Amicus Curate Ms. Seema Pandey has argued before this court that a very small quantity was recovered from the accused, hence punishment awarded by the court below is not proportionate and it should be reduced. It is also argued by her that in the site plan, the distances have not been shown and the PW2 investigating officer has stated in this regard that he did not consider it to be necessary to mention them. Further, it was argued that the accused has no prisoner history. He had been wrongly implicated and she should be acquitted as there is no sufficient evidence on record to prove him guilty. Tara, in rebuttal, the learned AJ has argued that the learned lower court has widely held that there was no requirement of making compliance of section 50 of the NDPS Act because it was a case of sudden arrest. The judges of the division bench did not make any reference to any particular omission or lacuna in the investigation. Castigation of investigation unfortunately seems to be a regular practice when the trial courts acquit the accused in criminal cases. In our perception, it is almost impossible to come across a single case wherein the investigation was conducted completely flawless or absolutely foolproof. The function of the criminal courts should not be wasted in taking out the lapses in investigation and by expressing unsavory criticism against investigating officers if, if offenders are acquitted only on account of flaws or defects in investigation, the cause of criminal justice becomes the victim. Efforts should be made by courts to see that criminal justice is salvaged despite such defects in investigation. Courts should bear in mind the time constraints of the police officers in the present system. Illiquid machinery they have to cope with and the traditional apathy of respectable persons to come forward for giving evidence in criminal cases which are realities. 
the police force has to confront with while conducting investigation in almost every case. Before an investigating officer is imputed with castigating remarks, the courts should not overlook the fact that usually such an officer is not heard in respect of such remarks made against them. In our view, the court need make such deprecatory remarks only when it is absolutely necessary in a particular case and that too by keeping in mind the broad realities indicated above. This court has already held that the prosecution has been successful in proving the recovery of contraband substance from the accused, of which he could show no license to possess. On the basis of entire evidence, therefore, this view of the court may not be upset only because of the above mentioned lacuna being pointed out in investigation. Now it could be significant to assess as to whether the accused has been rightly awarded punishment of 12 years R.I. and fine of rupees 120,000 or not. It has already been held in analysis given above that there was no compulsion for the court to take into consideration the factors which are mentioned in subsection A to M of section 32B of NTPS Act while awarding punishment higher to the minimum which was prescribed under law because that was discretion of court but taking into consideration the entire facts it is apparent that the lower court appears to have taken the view that since the accused had been found in a legal position of charas which was little above the commercial quantity Hence the punishment little above minimum that is 12 years and point little above minimum that is 1 lakh 20,000 would be proportionate. <coughs> but nowhere it appears that the court below had taken into consideration the fact that this was the first offence committed by the accused and he was not shown to have any previous criminal history. It is also on record that he comes from a poor background. Therefore, this court is of the view that since the recovery of the contraband substance is not so high that it was mandatory for the lower court to avoid punishment more than minimum prescribed, it would mean the ends of justice if the punishment is reduced to 10 years. R.I. and fine of rupees 1 lakh in the present case. The wise principle of presumption, which is also recognized by the legislature, is that judicial and official acts are regularly performed. Hence, when a police officer gives evidence in court that a certain article was recovered by him on the strength of the statement made by the accused, it is open to the court to believe that version to be correct if it is not otherwise shown to be unreliable. The burden is on the accused to cross examination of witnesses or through other materials to show that the evidence of the police officer is unreliable. If the court has any good reason to suspect the truthfulness of such records of the police, the court could certainly take into account the fact that no other independent person was present at the time of recovery, but it is not a legally approvable procedure to presume that police action is unreliable to start with, nor to jettison such action merely for the reason that police did not correct signatures of independent persons in the documents made contemporaneous with such actions, the prosecution case cannot be thrown out or doubted on that ground alone. Experience reminds us that civilized people are generally insensitive 
when a crime is committed even in their presence they withdraw both from the victim and the vigilant they keep themselves away from the court unless it is inevitable they think that crime like civil dispute is between two individuals or parties and they should not involve themselves this kind of apathy of the general public is indeed unfortunate but it is there everywhere whether in village life towns or cities one cannot ignore this handicap with which the investigating agency has to discharge its duties the gospel the brief parts giving rise to the present appeal are that a type to report was given by the complainant riyazuddin son of kali ahmed resident of village mukarpuri on 15 7 at the police station district bijnor to the effect that his wife ruksana has plugged his mobile for the purpose of charging in the circuit of electricity connection in the house of javed on 13 7 2012 his wife said his minor daughter the prosecutrix here in after referred to as the victim is about 13 years to the house of javed in the room javed son of akbar was sitting as soon as the victim entered the room javed bolted the door from his side and committed rape on her his wife kept on waiting for the victim for about 20 minutes and when the victim did not return she went to the house of javed and found the door bolted from his side on knocking the door javed did not open the door there after his wife went there along with naeem son of ali hasan there after the door was got open when the complainant wife and naeem was inside they found that hands and feet of the victim were tied taking advantage of the situation javed ran away from the spot it is further alleged in the report that the complainant was at panipat his wife has given information to him on telephone and thereafter he came back and lodged the first information report in this case a genius crime has been committed and the accused must suffer for its consequences a rapist not only violates the victim personal integrity but leaves in edible marks on the very soul of the helpless female in this case a helpless girl had been ravished by the accused who must have undergone a traumatic experience as a matter of fact the crime is not only against the victim it is against the whole society as well in view of the above discussion i am of the view that the prosecution has fully established its case beyond reasonable doubt the impute judgment and order of conviction and sentence dated 44/2013 passed by the additional district and session judge court number 9 bijnor in st number 605 of 2007 which has been sought to be appealed calls for no interference accordingly this appeal is dismissed the appellant is in jail he shall remain in jail to serve out the remaining sentence awarded by the trial court while deciding the period of sentence the authorities will take into consideration the remission of sentence which the accused appellant is entitled to in law part office is directed 
to send two certified copies of this judgment to the court concerned for record. Learned trial court would send one copy of the judgment to the superintendent of jail concerned for conveying the result of the appeal to the accused appellant and also apprise him of his legal remedy against this judgment. Compliance report be positively submitted to this court within eight weeks. Learned counsel for the appellant has contended that at the time when PW2 Gopi had gone to his field, it had become quite dark and there being no proof of existence of any source of light at the place where he had allegedly seen the disease consuming liquor with the plants and hence no reliance can be placed on his testimony on the upper se aspect of the matter. The upper se contention of the learned counsel for the plants also in our opinion is without any merit it is true that there is no evidence on record indicating that the place where the accused was seen consuming liquor with the accused of plant was illuminated either by the light of an electric bulb or from any other source but from the perusal of the site plant of the place where the dead body of the disease Pura was recovered and the place where the disease Pura was consuming liquor with all the three accused of plants in the evening of 16 6, 2009 and the course followed in APW2 Gopi while going to and returning from his field indicates that PW2 Gopi had passed from a very close proximity of the place where the disease was consuming liquor with all the three abuse of plants and since the disease as well as the abuse of plants were previously known to him and also the fact that in the month of June sufficient natural light is available up to 8 pm. We do not find any reason to disbelieve his evidence on the opposite aspect of the matter merely because the prosecution has failed to prove existence of any source of light. A view of the following discussion, we are of the firm opinion that the object with which right under section 50 within bracket 1 of the NDPS Act by way of a safeguard has been conferred on the suspect, namely to check the misuse of power to avoid harm to innocent persons and to minimize the allegations of planting of false cases by the law enforcement agencies. It would be imperative on the part of the empowered officer to apprise the person intended to be searched of his right to be searched before a guested officer or a magistrate. We have no hesitation to in holding that in so far as the obligation of unauthorized officer under subsection 1 of section 50 of the NDPS Act is concerned. It is mandatory and requires a strict compliance. Failure to comply with the provision would render the recovery of the innocent article suspect and vitiate the conviction if the same is recorded only on the basis of the recovery of the innocent article from the person of the accused during search, search thereafter the suspect may or may not choose to exercise the right provided to him under the said provision. If it I propose to confine myself to two or three important features of the bill which require re-examination and close attention by the government. Sir, I need hardly emphasize 
द इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल विच द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी सप्लाई अंडरटेकिंग स्प्लिट इन द नेशनल इकोनॉमी ऑफ द कंट्री इन नीड द डेवलपमेंट इन अदर स्पीड डिपेंड अपॉन a full development of the supply of power and this bill is of vital importance affecting as it does the development of electric supply undertaking in the country i am focusing attention on the role that private electricity undertaking are playing in the supply of electric power with a view to drawing the attention of government to the difficulties that are found to be faced by these electricity undertaking in one or two directions in this connection i would not therefore like to take much of the time of the honorable house but i would like to draw the attention of the honorable minister to what my friend shri tulsi das has stated and with whose comments i am in full agreement as a matter of fact the approach of the government to the bill is to fulfill three basic considerations so vital for the healthy growth of this industry firstly that its proper control and regulation is but necessary I fully agree that this is subject to certain differences on basic aspects but the important consideration governing this bill is to attempt at providing suitable incentives to the industry which alone can enable it to increase its capacity to the desired extent therefore i would like to refer to the incentives are provided in the bill are to the need for liberalizing the clause in respect of the fair return to the investors in these undertaking i would like to draw the attention of the honorable minister to the fact that since the passing of the original act in 1948 only eight states throughout the country have constituted the statutory electricity board among these states are madhya pradesh west bengal tamil nadu kerala rajasthan punjab odisha and maharashtra and therefore we find that many of the states have still to continue these electricity boards means mr chairman the discussion on the resolution put forward by mr sinha on the substitute motion put forward in mr das has turned out to be a discussion in the nature of a general discussion of the budget of the all india radio i do not want to go into all the considerations which have been put forward but i want to say one thing about the substitute motion that has been put forward by mr das i think in india we are developing a passion for having committees and commission we want a committee or a commission for every place thing that there is in india i think there are millions and millions of things in india i would say that before we think of having any other commission or committee appointed we should first of all read the reports of those committees and commissions which are before us digest them and take action on them and then think of doing something else for instance what is the record of the ministry of broadcasting in the matter of the film inquiry committee report they have now the press commission report the two bodies have been set up by this ministry what action has been taken on the report of the film inquiry committee and what action is going to be taken 
on the report of the press commission i think that the press commission's report may be thrown into cold storage the first thing the report that i took up was maternal act child welfare and i am glad to be able to say that a great deal of progress has been made in maternal and child welfare the centers have increased enormously while i agree entirely with my friend that we have not of course got enough health centers in rural areas or enough personal i think the creation of the personal the creation of the health centers the creation of the maternity and child welfare centers is going ahead with a fair amount of speed i was delighted when i went the other day to bhopal to see in the remote villages that the villages themselves have built up maternity and child welfare centers and government have put qualified women to look after them the care of the child is certainly our greatest responsibility and the fact that the death rate per thousand of the estimated population has decreased during the last 7 years is peaks i think in evidence of the fact that the infant and maternal care is now receiving the care that it merits i hope that in these community project areas in the secondary health centers which i would like to come into the national extension service block still further care will be given to maternal and child welfare needs so that we may be able to serve this part of the population better than we have done so far a sum of rupees 50 lakhs has been given by the center especially for maternity and child welfare to the backward areas 99 start we do not find any reason to disbelieve him stop moreover comma post incident conduct of the accused aplan raja ram is also an extremely relevant circumstance which indicates his complicity in the commission of the murder of his wife shrimati chand kali and the falling of the deceased into the canal was not accidental stop in case his wife had actually fallen into the canal accidentally and drowned comma then on returning to his village comma he should have immediately given information about the occurrence to the police which admittedly he failed to do stop moreover comma he set up a false plea in reply to the question number 21 put to him during his examination under section 313 comma crpc that his wife had gone to her maternal home about 5 days before the occurrence which he failed to prove by adducing any evidence to we are not inclined to disbelieve the evidence of pw4 home because merely on the ground that there was delay of about 2 or 3 days on the part of the investigating officer in recording his statement under section 161 comma crpc para thus comma upon a holistic view of the parts of the case and a straight view the scrutiny of the evidence on record and a careful evaluation of the facts 
on record comma we have no hesitation in holding that the prosecution has succeeded in proving beyond all reasonable doubts that accused abdullah rajaram had knowingly caused the death of his wife shrimati chandrakali by pushing her into canal stop the lanet trial judge in our considered opinion did not commit any illegality or legal infirmity in convicting the accused of land raja ram under section 302 comma ipc and awarding him imprisonment for life and we do not find any reason to interfere with the same sara this appeal lacks merit and is accordingly dismissed sara the accused of land raja ram is on bail stop his bail bonds are cancelled and his securities discharged stop chief judicial magistrate comma pdb is forthwith directed to take him into custody and send him to jail for serving out the remaining part of his sentence whereby accused of the appellant banta singh was convicted for the offences punishable under section 304 part 2 stop indian penal code open bracket here in after referred to as ipc close bracket and was sentenced to rigorous imprisonment for a period of 10 years and to pay fine of rupees 15000 and in default of payment of fine a simple imprisonment for another 6 months para brief facts of the prosecution case are that on 4.8.2005 at about 9:15 pm in charge a r t o kushi nagar sanjay kumar jha along with other enforcement staff was checking over load and unauthorized vehicle plying on the road near Fasil Nagar on the direction of Transport Commissioner Stop. The driver of truck number PB thirteen L slash nine five one three was driving the vehicle very rashly from Tambukiraj to Kashia. Stop. Member of the enforcement truck stop tried to stop the truck driver. by making signal but truck driver did not stop the truck and attempted to damage the vehicle of enforcement staff stop driver of checking party chased the truck up to 3 km then truck driver stopped the truck stop constable enforcement staff kabir ahmed went near the truck and demanded necessary papers from the truck driver relating to vehicle for verification stop as soon as constable kabir ahmed reached near the truck comma truck driver hard pressed the constable kabir ahmed by running the truck on him due to which constable kabir ahmed died on the spot in charge a rto sanjay kumar jha informed the district magistrate Kushi Nagar and Regional Transport Officer Kama Gurakpur about the occurrence. Stop. He also chased the truck at about five kilometer distance from the spot. Truck driver stopped the truck in the mid of the road and fled away due to dark night. They could not apprehend the truck driver. निकल आए
आप तो मन लगा कर रहे थे गुप्ता जी देख ली समस्या तो ये है अरे गुप्ता जी देख लेना खा रहे भैया पता नहीं कौन मैटर बोल देते The third argument made before the court was that the accused of plot was not.